Good morning, everybody. I would say good morning, sunshine, but it's pretty. It's pretty cloudy today. It's raining, but the sun is still there. I woke up this morning on Twitter to uh, some controversy. The the comment that I first saw was uh, that uh, how do we put it? That uh, it's no big deal. NBD. This whole Yearly Roth thing. All right. And I tried to look into it, and there was someone who was upset about it who had blocked me on Twitter. But I was able to, uh, I was able to find another Twitter account, you know, that I run. That uh, and I was able to read, read the, the tweets that were blocked to my regular Twitter. Um, so I found out that there's some mild controversy about some of the uh, students of Rabbi Yoel Roth getting married uh, uh, two or three years younger, maybe one year younger than they usually would. In, in our Hasidic communities, it's very common to get married at 17 or 18. I myself, I was an old, I was an old man when I got married. I was, I guess, I was 22 when I got married. Almost 23, maybe a month uh, before my 23rd birthday, three weeks, three and a half weeks before my 23rd birthday. So uh, you know, I, I was, I was an old man getting married. And my wife was 29. I guess my wife's a little older than me. Uh, So there's this whole controversy about, uh, I guess, uh, someone 16, 15, 16 getting married. And all of these people who brand themselves as liberals are very shocked by this, which I don't understand because aren't they the people who say love is love, right? If, if two men can get married, why can't these two young adults get married? I mean, in so many of the secular cultures, they're engaging in fornication at that age. Uh, and here you have <coughs> two young adults who, uh, you know, they're not, you know, they want to do things the right way. Now, I'm not saying that it's something that I would encourage in my family, <coughs> and I would not officiate at such a wedding. But it's really none of my business the decisions that other families make, and I think this is the bigger issue that's here, because there was, the person who brought this up, I was having DM conversations with him about it, and he said, you know, it's not really a big deal, because, you know, they're going to live, you know, down the block from from, from the in-laws, and, you know, if, if the 16-year-old mom has too much problems, you know, with the kids, you know, they, they can go to Bubby, who's... 43, you know, and that's what this this person was defending, you know, what was going on, again, saying he would never do it, he didn't, doesn't want it for his kids, but he doesn't see the problem, but I, to me, I don't even care, like, you do your thing, and I have enough to worry about me, and maybe my own family, and my own job, that I don't have time to be worried about what someone else is doing but more than that my concern about this was a few years ago it was legal in New York with parental permission to get married at 15 and they changed it to, uh, and uh, that uh, the age is 17 and it used to be 17 you didn't need parental permission and then they changed that 17 not only you need parental permission, but you need a judge to sign off on it, and it's hard to find a judge who's willing to do that. Um, we should get some Hamish judges, you know, in uh, in Curious Yol or uh, you know, or Village of New Square or Village of Kaiser. I don't even know what what they have in those villas, uh, what kind of a court system they have in, in New Square or Kaiser. I don't think they have any. And, and uh, Curious Joel still runs their court, uh, which is not even a village. And, you know, it's, I mean, the village, Curious Joel is still a village, 
but the uh, it's not in the town of Monroe anymore. But they kind of piggyback off of Monroe Town Court. They haven't opened their own court, which I don't understand. Go ahead, open a court, open a a, a post office. Uh, you know, it, it would be great. You know, they could have a post office that's open on Sunday and closed on Shabbos. They could have a lot of business with a Sunday post office. And there are post offices other parts of America where there are a lot of Seventh Day Adventists that were open Sunday and closed Saturday. I think there was, there's one somewhere in, somewhere down south, I don't remember, it was Kentucky, one or two like that, and uh, maybe, it, I don't know if it was Tennessee or Kentucky, and I believe there was also one in California, but I think they changed. But go ahead, open a post, you know, we have, in the town of Bethel, where I live, we must have like seven post offices, and then another, and then part of the, the community is served by a post office from the town of um, the town of Liberty, and yet uh, the, the whole town of, uh, of Palm Tree still has their post office in the town of Monroe. I don't get it. You know, I, I know Samarov, he pushed that the Yungalite should get jobs in the post office because it's like a good job, a government job, you have benefits and everything. I don't understand it. Anyway. But that that's the situation that we're we're dealing with here. Uh, let's put this aside for now. The fact that the because yes, in Kirishville, a lot of people do get married at 17. And I don't know if they wait a year to get the marriage license because most of the most of the time, from what I understand, is that they get the marriage license early. You know, there's there's this a uh, a libel that you know the the Hasidic couples only get married by the rabbi and don't and don't actually get a marriage license. I was in the office of the Sapper Rebbe in Curious Joel. With, and I saw a whole stack of marriage licenses that he signed that were ready to be mailed. Um, and the fact of the matter was that before the town of the before the town of Palm Tree seceded from the town of Monroe, probably 70% of the marriage licenses in the town of Monroe were coming from that one mile by one mile one square mile area of the village of Curious Joel. Uh, and I'm sure a, a, a great number of them uh, were coming from other places, uh, from other Hasidim who lived outside the village as well. It, it, could, it was probably something like 80% of the marriage licenses in the town of Monroe were Hasidic Jews. So, you know, they, they tell these lies that don't even make sense because it doesn't work that way. You don't get more... Uh, benefits by not being legally married if you're living together it doesn't it, it doesn't work that way uh, it goes by the people living in the household not whether or not you're married you don't get more food stamps if you're not married um, and also the New York State recognizes a rabbi to sign a marriage license and the Rebbe himself Sabah Rebbe signs all the marriage licenses that for all the weddings that he performs. I know um, in, in our community, because in the summer, a lot of people who live in Brooklyn don't want to wait in line to get a marriage license. So they get their marriage license. It could be a year before they get married. Not It's not usually that long. The, the engagements aren't that long. But let's say they're getting married in, in October or November, and then they're going to get their marriage license in July in our neighborhood. So they don't have to wait in line and they'll usually get it all done with already. We, they go to my rabbi and he signs the marriage licenses. Shalom al Yisrael. So, and, and again, the, this is before people have their religious ceremony. I don't, I don't think, to be honest, I don't know whether or not uh, the Sapa Rebbe in Williamsburg signs the marriage licenses. What I understand is people go to the, the Sachta Sarabonim to get the marriage license signed because I, I don't know if 
know, if you're if it's in Brooklyn, you have to be registered with the city. I don't know if Ramsam and Lave ever registered with the city. Upstate, you don't need any registration. You just need to be a rabbi, and then that, that's covered. But anyway, the point that I'm making is that the hypocrisy of someone like Andrew Cuomo, who long before the Oberfeld or whatever, uh, whatever that case was called in, in old New York, uh, in, in the Supreme Court that imposed by judicial fiat the redefinition of marriage on all states, which makes absolutely no sense because every state operates in a totally different way when it comes to marriage licenses and some municipalities have different laws and for the Supreme Court to make some kind of judicial fiat over all the states is absolutely ridiculous. But even before that happened and with no kind of, uh, uh, what do they call it? No, <clears throat> referendum from the state. We had to have a referendum to legalize gambling in New York State. We didn't have to have a referendum on redefinition of marriage makes no sense. They just did it on their own and, and unfortunately had a few a few Sharma Shabbos, Sheldon Silver, now he's in prison. He never got uh, pardoned by President Trump. It's because he, I, you know, that, that's his comeuppance for, for what he did to, to the state of New York by doing that. But being a libertarian, more or less, I mean, I'm a registered Republican, but at least a small L libertarian or a classical liberal, I really don't care as long as they're not forcing us to do those weddings. But I've had a few times when I had to say no. I even one time showed up. I didn't, at this point, I prefer not to answer ads if I see it's a man requesting the services of a wedding officiant because I don't know, uh, you know, if, if I see it's a woman, you know, uh, there's nothing biblically <clears throat> prohibited for, for a non-Jew if it is two women and, and you know, so that's, you know, that's less of an issue. Um, but it's my religious right, you know, to say I don't provide this service. And not only I don't provide the service, I can't provide the service because if I did provide this service, I'd be defrocked. And therefore, the, I would no longer be in communion with my ordaining body. And from a civil standpoint, the wedding would be null and void. It, it wouldn't work just the same as if I would do a wedding between a Jew and a non-Jew. So, uh, but I can do weddings between, you know, two non-Jews. Today I'm doing two of those, uh, you know. And, you know, that is allowed by my faith tradition for me to do that, and so I do it. Um, but with that being said, I, I, I'm not going to be Messiah Kedushin for two 15-year-old Chassidim. But there are enough, you know, Chassidim and Chassidist. But I don't have a problem with it. If, if love is love, if two men can get married, why can't two 15-year-olds get married? How is it... And, and the fact that the same guy who made the law of Cuomo who made the law that two men can get married or two women can get married in New York State. Not only he redefined marriage in that way, but he redefined marriage that two 15-year-olds or two 16-year-olds can't get married, and why not? What? Love is love, love is love. And I know they're saying, oh, it's child abuse, and this and that. No, it's not. Why was it, why was it not child abuse two years ago when it was legal and now it's child abuse? I mean, and it's not only our community, you know, what, you, you think the Muslims are not making the nikah ceremonies, the boyfriends and girlfriends, so they're within, so they're not doing anything haram? So, so it's not registered with the state. But they're, you know, what, what, what's wrong? Who's that hurting? How is it any different and all of these kids who, who are, like I said, they're fornicating. They're, they're fornicating outside of wedlock, all, all of these teenagers in the high schools. But that's okay. 
because there's no piece of paper attached to it. But you attach a piece of paper to it, somehow that's wrong. Do you realize how upside down this is? And I'm not, and then again, I don't care if that's what they do in the secular world. That's their business. But what I'm just saying is like the lack of logic here. And they're saying, oh, these, 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 these kids are getting forced into marriage. No, they're not. They want to get married. You can't force someone to get married in Judaism. It doesn't work that way. And halachically, when you're 13 years old, you're an adult. So, uh, you know, and uh, my understanding is that, you know, these are Breslov or Hasidim. Most Breslov or Hasidim don't do this. But uh, Rabbi Roth was a student of Rabbi Shik who did follow this practice. And Rebbe Nachman himself, the founder of the Breslov Hasidic communities, uh, was married when he was 13. He died when he was 36 or 37. And he already had grandchildren that he could have a conversation with. There's records on his deathbed of the conversations that he had with his grandchildren about, you know, he asked his grandson to pray for him. And he said, you know, if you give me your watch, I'll pray for you. And the Hasidim laughed, and 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 the Rebbe said, he said, uh, "What are you laughing at? This is what I've been trying to teach you my whole life." That's a very deep story. You know, he got married when he was 13, and people say, "Well, times were different back then." You know, you saw he died when he was 36, and the, the life expectancy was 30. First of all, life expectancy wasn't 30. If, if most people were living, you know, to be 70, 80 years old, you know, if they live, you know, if they made it, you know, out of infancy, you know, the, the reason why they said that the, you know, the average life expectancy was because there was a higher infant mortality rate, but also at that time there was, you know, he died, I believe was cholera or one, one of, it was a, uh, a uh, pandemic that happened in his time and that's how he died um, I don't know if it was cholera or it was another one of those diseases that was a, a communicable disease that he that, a, a, an infectious disease that, 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 that uh, and that's how he passed away uh, how he left this world and went to the next world but anyway anyway so but he was a very big neshama, or Nachman Breslover was, uh, you know, probably one, one of our greatest saints in, in Israel in all of history. Uh, a unique individual, very different than, than, than all the other tzaddikim, you know, a very special person. I'm not a Breslover chassid, but I went to Uman once, and I'm very happy that I did. And I'd like to learn his Torah as many way. There's nothing wrong with this. It, 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 the, the hypocrisy of the left is ridiculous, and it just proves time and time again that they are not liberal. The real liberals are those of us that are, quote-unquote, on the right. Because the, the truth is, you know, look at Donald Trump. He doesn't care. He wasn't against... He was never against gay marriage. He was attending gay weddings his whole life. He had plenty of gay friends. He had no problem with it. And, and he was always supportive of, of the gays. And Joe Biden was always against gay marriage. And now all of a sudden, and, and Donald Trump never changed his, his tune, but Joe Biden, to be popular, I don't think he believes one way or the other. He just does whatever's popular, as opposed to Donald Trump, who does what's right for the world, maybe not in his personal life, whatever he does, but he doesn't care about, you know, he, didn't, he never did anything wrong in his presidency. He had a perfect presidency. And the media and the left and the communists and the globalists attack us and destroy this country and take away our freedoms. And, and, they, and they make themselves look like they're the heroes, like they're the liberals. They're not. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. Again, if, if, if you're talking about a 40-year-old guy marrying a 15-year-old, that, that is abuse. That is not allowed. That, I, I, you know... That we're not we're not talking about that. We're talking about two 15-year-olds getting married. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Alright, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment, and see you later.